Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the New England Racing Show. Manchester, New Hampshire, Community TV, Channel 23, and also posted on YouTube weekly. And I'm your host, Bill Sturgis. Well, this past weekend, we went to Waterford, Connecticut uh, for the Waterford Speed Bowl. And they had, this was their final weekend of racing. And it's been hard to believe it's been six months since we've been there. We were there for their opening weekend back in early April. And now the racing season's almost over. And we went to their uh, fall finale weekend. They had uh, the midgets, modifieds, and uh, a bunch of other divisions. So we taped uh, the heat races on Saturday. And this is some of the SK modifieds. This was one of the heat races. Waterford is a uh, 3A smile oval. It's one of our favorite tracks, asphalt tracks anyway. The SK Modifieds are uh, pretty much the same except for the engine as the uh, NASCAR Wheeling Tour Modifieds. The difference is that these engines probably have maybe $15,000 in them and the Tour Modifieds have uh, $60,000, $70,000. So uh, I, I don't know how anyone can afford to race the Tour, but they do. And you see engines blowing up left and right. Uh, but these here are just as exciting, especially on a track like this. The bigger tracks like Thompson and Stafford and the uh, New Hampshire Speedway, they get strung out, but there's nothing like short track racing for these cars. Just like uh, Waterford, Lee, and Star, and Monadnock. They put on a really good show. And you can see the first two cars that's how you that's how you got to pass is get your wheel under them and just stick it in there and hope that the uh, leader sees you and gives way now these cars have mirrors so you have a lot of uh, mirror driving so to speak where you'll try to take up a as wide a space as possible unlike the midgets that we're going to show next they have no no mirrors and no spotters and I don't know if these SKs have spotters a spotter is a person that will be up at the top row of the grandstands and uh, have a radio to the driver and they can tell the driver how they're if there's someone coming up on them or if they're clear to pass another car without hitting them as they cut in just like uh, the cup cars have. I kind of like like the super modifieds and the midgets don't have spotters or mirrors. And to me that's the real racing. Here's the Nema light. They had two heats. They had a total of 22 cars so there's like 11 in each heat. Look at that, three wide. These NEMA lights put on just such a fantastic show because they're so evenly matched. It's a mixture of young drivers and older drivers. People have found that it's a really affordable way to race. You're looking at engines that might be five thousand uh, dollars, and the midget is the same as the regular Nina midgets, and they're about eight tenths to a second slower per lap than the Nina midgets. But I don't think that matters. It's, it's what kind of show you put on.
you'll see these cars just go side by side for three or four laps, inches away from each other. I and mean, that takes some really skillful driving. That there is the 76 car driven by Keith Rocco, who's a regular at Waterford, who drives several different divisions. And he had a left rear tire go flat on him. It ended up sending him into the wall and ruining the day for him and uh, his car owner. They had a lot of damage on the front and rear axles. So they were done for the day. Now we have a restart. These are different from the dirt midgets that we saw up at Bear Ridge. Uh, they have the wings to hold them down in the corner and they usually run coil over shocks in the back where the dirt midgets have torsion bars. So this gives you a little quicker response on pavement that you need. Looks like one to go. it for the first Nima light heat. There's a flag stand there on the front stretch. The crowd was a little sparse on Saturday. Uh, what they did, they ran all the qualifying heats and some of the features on Saturday and then the rest of the features on Sunday but Sunday turned out to be kind of cloudy and then it rained so they only got a couple of features in on Sunday we raced the NEMA light series and we got our feature in on uh, Saturday and were able to go home there's a shot of the uh, back part of the pits where all the midgets were And some other divisions were mixed in there too. This is turn one and two that you were looking at. They had a little officials booth with a, a roof that they let us go up on and tape all these. So we got a really good vantage point. Here's the start of the second heat. It's a 31 in the lead of, uh, I think it's Ryan Bigelow. On the outside, in second place, is uh, Christian Briggs, the 44 car, and he was really fast. Brandon Igo in the 45, holding on to a loose race car, a white one. Well, Christian just took first place, and he was off. <laughs> Off he went, left everybody in the dust there. But you had a good race for second. Three cars there. 39's an Ecotech engine, which had a lot of power, as did the second place, the yellow car, the Honda car. So those were the two most powerful cars there. But as you can see, uh, 39 had some handling problems. That 50 is Carl Maderos Jr. He's uh, the points leader in Lima Light. And his car is always set up really well, handled really good. So even though he didn't have as much horsepower as these two in front of him, uh, he was able to, to catch him on the uh, corners and, and pass him. There's Christian Briggs, the leader. The 
one to go. Now, being the points leader, Carl's not going to take any unnecessary chances. Uh, he wants to protect his points lead so he can win the championship. And uh, I don't blame him. We'd all do that if we were in his shoes. Now, we have the NEMA, the regular NEMA heats. They had two of those. These cars have about twice the horsepower that the uh, Nemo lights do. And they're about a second faster. And add another $20,000 in your engine. So you tell me if it's worth it. But they put on a great show too. That's Randy Cabral there, the black and red car. Four car was Ian Cummins driving the uh, Bobby Seymour car. Ian's another young driver that came up through the quarter midget ranks, having raced at Pennsylvania at Oakland Speedway. I believe he's been racing since he was six or seven years old. You can always tell these quarter midget kids, they all do well when they, they come out of quarter midgets, no matter what they end up driving. It's a good move. Here's a second Nima heat. Competition's really good in NEMA and NEMA Light. I'd say at least two thirds of the field is, is a poten are potential winners. So you never know who's going to have their car set up just right that weekend. That's that's the one that's going to win. Right in the front of that group is Seth Carlson, the 71. He won at Oswego Speedway a couple of weeks ago. Seth's engine is a uh, one of the uh, lower cost Esslingers, more like a spec engine, and it has electronic fuel injection, which is different than a lot of cars that have mechanical fuel injection. Just like the passenger cars, it, they're all going to uh, computer type uh, tuning, and it's just takes a little getting used to if you're an old time racer. And the black car in the back right there uh, is John Zitch. Has the same engine and he's really on a tear this year. There's those three cars fighting for position and the 21 hopped the wheel, the right rear wheel 
on the last turn of the last lap and ended up going into the fencing and wrecking the right front of his car. So uh, he was out for the rest of the day. And I don't know if he'll get his car fixed for next week, but uh, that's too bad. You know, you look in and you see... Uh, you see him hit the fence, and it doesn't look that bad until they get the car back to the garage, and you realize that it's torn up a lot. But anyway, our next segment is uh, we have an in-car camera from the NEMA light feature of my son PJ Sturgis's car. We have what they call a GoPro, the Hero cameras, and he there was 20 cars that started the feature. PJ started 12th and finished second so you'll get to see him pass quite a few cars and the way they do the handicapping in the NEMA light races you see I call them the heats the qualifying races is you have to finish in the top six to start in the top 12 they'll have two races so the top six out of each comprise the top 12 that are going to be in the uh, feature and they take those 12 cars and they handicap them so whoever has been doing the best in the last four races starts 12th and whoever's been doing the worst in the last four races starts on the pole as long as they finished in the first six in their heat uh, it took me a while to figure this out but uh, PJ's been doing really well in the last four races I think he had one or two wins and some seconds so he started 12th and uh, that he doesn't mind doing that because you have to work your way through the crowd uh, but you're gonna be amazed at uh, the GoPro as to how close these cars really are and uh, I'm watching this and I I'm just amazed that we're, <laughs> we're not crashing more often because uh, he'll be he'll be uh, trying to pass a car and his car that he's passing is getting a little bit out of shape and coming up into him but uh, here he is they're lining up for the race cage on the left side. Uh, sorry, the uh, picture's a little crooked. There we go. This car has a Ford Focus engine, as do most of these NEMA light cars. And they rev up to about 6,900 RPMs at the end of the straightaway. They have they have uh, mechanical fuel injection and about 175 horsepower. So on the parade lap, they went four wide, just as a show. They had 20 cars. This is uh, NEMA tradition. They'll go four wide, and as they go by the crowd, everyone waves to the drivers, and the drivers wave, wave to the crowd. Uh, but thank God they don't start them four wide. They'll get back into their uh, two abreast formation before they start. So here they come around to the grandstands, 
and everyone's waving. Now they go back into two abreast. They're moving back and forth to uh, keep their tires warm, keep the friction from the tires on, on the ground, heats them up. So the last thing you want to do is start on cold tires. They won't grip as well and that's when you have accidents. This race was right around 5 o'clock, the sun was starting to go down except for one little part of the uh, track. Okay, they're coming around to take the green. A lot of cars were trying to stay low, so PJ said the high the high groove was where you wanted to be. That's where he did all his passing. race was 25 laps and there weren't any yellows it went green to check it so I believe he's in fourth place now there's three cars ahead of him the yellow car in first place Ryan Bigelow the white car of Kenny Johnson on the right there and the red car Avery Store a young driver who's uh, up and coming I believe he's only 15 years old but he's a pretty good driver and now PJ's trying to catch them They're all real fast, so you can see they're getting a little bigger. They say you've got to hit your marks when you're driving, which means you, you've got to know when to let up and when to step on it. And that's where you get your consistency is keep hitting the marks lap after lap. He's almost up on them now. Kenny Johnson's passed both of them and he's off. He's, he's leaving everybody. And way up ahead is some lap cars that they're coming up on. Okay, he's caught the 15A. Going by him. Now to get by the Honda. Pins him behind the lap car, and off he goes. Now Kenny's way up ahead. Almost a whole straightaway lead. DJ's only hope now is for a yellow or that Kenny gets jammed up in lap traffic. He's 
gaining a little bit, but not much. Kenny was really fast. I think Kenny and PJ were the two fastest cars uh, on lap times. Right around 14.0. coming up on some lap cars. This is where experience counts. When you're driving through traffic, you gotta know how to work the traffic. PJ was able to pin the, uh, the Honda car behind the lap car and pass both of them. It's Kenny way up ahead. I believe he's two cars ahead of us. That was it. There's Kenny up ahead. We gained a little bit on him. He finished about a second, 1.1 seconds ahead. Good drive by Kenny and PJ. The Honda car finished third. And the first threes get to stop on the start-finish line for the Victory Lane celebration. And there's a flagman, Steve Grant. The adrenaline is going, I'll tell you, for these drivers when they get out. They can't eat for about <laughs> two hours before or two hours after the race. And there's Kenny Johnson ahead of him. Uh, he got to take the checkered flag around. So that was a real exciting uh, race. And they treated us really well at Waterford. We were really happy. They let us go up on a little roof and tape. And uh, we had a great time. So this coming weekend, we're going to be at Lee Speedway for their fall finale. And we will be uh, taping quite a bit of action and showing it to you for the next few weeks. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.